Thanks. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Xiao Wang from uh, University of Maryland. Uh, so today I'm talking about uh, faster secure two-party computation in the single execution settings. I joined work with uh, Alex Molodimov uh, and Jonathan Katz, my advisor. Um, so let's first uh, give a, have a high-level view of uh, two-party computation implementations. So on the one hand, we have a lot of uh, implementations and systems for semi-honest to PC, when it, and we have developed uh, tons of applications, including privacy, preserving machine learning, matrix factorization, genomic computation, and all this stuff. On the other, on the other hand, when we take a look at the malicious to PC, uh, we only have uh, AES, SHA-1 and SHA-256. And that's all. So why this is the case, uh, so we can summarize it uh, in like uh, two points. So on the one hand, malicious uh, 2PC is much slower. It's le much less efficient. On the other hand, uh, it's very hard to scale to large input. And when we, uh, actually, according to our experience, when we directly scale it to large input, it becomes much, much slower. So in this work, we want to uh, partially address these two points and make it better. So let me first have uh, some kind of a high-level view of uh, the previous uh, paradigms for 2PC. So we have circuit-level cut-and-choose, which is uh, based on like garbage circuit, where we do cut-and-choose on circuit level. It uh, started with linear pinkers at 2007. And uh, so the most re recent line of work is able to achieve row number of circuit with row uh, statistical security parameter. And we also have gate-level cut-and-choose, uh, start with uh, uh, and, and TCC09. So this line of work is also known as Lego, and we also have uh, other protocols for the amortized setting and the pre-processing setting. So in this paper, in this work, we focus on the circuit, circuit level cut and choose. And we notice that for our previous work, we either need a large number of public keys proportional to the input, or we need another execution of a 2 pc protocol that is, in, that is outside of the current, um, current uh, uh, outside of this protocol to do the input recovery. So here in our work, we are able to reduce the number of public key to kappa, which is essentially what you always need for the base OT, and also we don't need additional 2 pc protocol. Uh, so let me start with a uh, semi-honest 2 pc uh, protocol based on garbage circuit. So let's assume that Alice and Bob want to compute a function with only one input and one, out, one input from each side and one output. So the first step is to compute a garbled circuit with uh, its related garbled keys. So here, the solid lines are, solid bars are for one bit and the uh, empty bars are for zero bit. So Alice can uh, first send the garbled circuit, send the labels corresponding to, here, to her own, own input, and then they can do a protocol called uh, oblivious transfer. Uh, the color is not showing very nice. There is a box. There is supposed to be a gray box around the oblivious transfer. Uh, and then the, the protocol um, allows Bob to learn his own label and without la letting Alice to know the value of Y. And then Bob can just evaluate this and get the output. However, this is obvi obviously not uh, maliciously secure for many various reasons. And uh, so one of the paradigm is to do to use majority-based cut and choose. So in this case, uh, instead of just sending one circuit, uh, so Alice is going to send about uh, three times row number of circuit, and they can still do oblivious transfer to let Bob learn like uh, the input labels, and the Bob can now like do a kind of a cut and choose and kind of roughly check half of the circuit whether they are uh, correctly generated or not. So if any of them are not correctly generated, then Bob knows that Alice is cheating. And if not, uh, Bob has a high-level idea that uh, Alice is mostly being honest. Uh, and then, like, uh, like uh, they, I mean, from high level, they can, uh, Bob can evaluate all the circuit that, that is not checked. And uh, uh, so, they are, they are, uh, so Bob is expecting that actually the, ma the majority of the output is going to be the correct output. And the math actually works out that if we kind of send three, number of, three row number of circuit, everything works out. Um, yeah. So, so more recently, there is a new paradigm called input recovery based cut and choose. So in this case, the, the, the difference is that we only need row number of circuit, which is um, kind of what the best we can get. And in this case, Bob is still going to evaluate all the circuit, and uh, some of them is going to give some other result. 
uh, that is uh, flipped. So it, it, it essentially means that Bob is able to get uh, both of the labels for one of the wire. And then they are going to run a protocol, something that uh, Bob can input the evidence that Alice is not behaving correctly, and uh, the protocol will allow this small box input recovery will let um, Bob to learn the learn Alice input act, and then Bob can compute the function directly locally. So in this case, uh, we just need to guarantee that at least one of the circuit is good. Um, therefore, we need like a much less circuit. We just need row circuit. So there are mo there are mostly com three common issues in this kind of protocols. One is to how to design an efficient input recovery protocol I just shown. And also there are also attacks that we need to address efficiently. Um, so I will first talk about uh, input recovery. Uh, yeah. So input recovery is this uh, little box. Uh, again, please imagine that there's a gray box around. So prior, prior works either require a large number of uh, public key operations or need another malicious 2PC um, protocol to, to compute this input recovery. Uh, so in this paper, we, uh, we, uh, so we, we design a new protocol that is based on DDH, and it just requires six exponentiation per circuit, and then like uh, four of them is fixed based, actually. And so from a high-level idea, so it's uh, kind of uh, follows uh, the non-interactive 2PC protocol by uh, AMPR, actually. Uh, so, uh, so first, uh, uh, Alice is going to have uh, keys and seed for each of the circuit, and he's going to use, uh, so all the randomness that I derive from the seed and, uh, and uh, the stuff that, uh, that is supposed to be learned from the evaluation circuit is encrypted by the key. Uh, so they are going to run oblivious transfer such that uh, uh, Bob knows the key for the evaluation circuit and knows the seed for the check circuit. And uh, well, I mean, so very different from uh, other uh, previous works, we are going to uh, let Alice run uh, oblivious transfer where Alice is the receiver, and Bob sends some random labels, M0 and M1. And then uh, after, th after, th after we are done with, with this, once uh, for each of the circuit, Alice is going to kind of mask the input, uh, uh, mask the random labels uh, she received in the previous oblivious transfer and send the encryption of this masked value. So in some sense, this is, a, in some, word, some sense, a commi commitment to the X, because Alice does not know the other label, so he, she cannot really flip the label. And Bob can only get uh, such value for the evaluation circuit, but not the check circuit. After that, they can run a, like, all, like uh, the remaining part of the protocol, and at the very end, they can run a small protocol that is actually based on DDH, such that if, uh, uh, if, if the value of delta and omega are the same, then, then Bob can learn the seed, otherwise Bob learns nothing. So here, uh, so if Bob learns the seed, it, mean, it means that Bob learns seed and the, uh, and the key for one of the circuit. And, uh, and, and at that point, then Bob can actually strip out, uh, decrypt and strip out the, uh, strip out the mask to, to learn the X. So this is just semi-honestly secure, and we, there are more effort that you need to do to make it uh, maliciously secure. However, uh, it turns out that uh, everything can be incorporated into the giant cut and choose efficiently. Uh, so more details, see the paper. Well, so the next issue is uh, how to do this uh, selective failure attack. So this is, a, this is not a, like a new attack. It's a very, it's a very like, uh, famous and everybody know like, uh, this kind of attack. So, so, so essentially, the attack uh, is that the gobbler can actually uh, so when, when trying to like, let Bob know uh, the input labels, a couple of, uh, Alice can kind of corrupt one, one side of the labels, and such that Bob, whether Bob can evaluate the circuit depends on his own input. Because if, let's say in this case, if Y is one, Bob learns the solid line, which is valid, but if Y is zero, Bob learns like a corrupted red bars that are just like, like a garbage. Uh, so there are, uh, so mostly the, the, the way to prevent selective failure attack is to use so-called probe, low probe matrix. So uh, in the following, I'm going to introduce our improved probe matrix. It's a kind of address uh, like some hidden non-cryptographic overhead that is uh, largely ignored in the previous papers. And for just like a 64K bit input, it actually has a 1,000 times improvement in, top, in terms of the running time. There are also other ways to, um, to address this kind of attack. 
but that requires a lot, large number of public keys. Uh, so let me first recall, uh, root probe matrix is a, is a matrix uh, such that if, you cho if we choose any subset of, of the rows and XR them, then there are at least row number of ones in the result in the row. So once we have this kind of row probe matrix, and given we have the input y, we just need to find a random y prime such that uh, the matrix vector multiplication holds. So once we have this, uh, this is the old protocol that is not secure against uh, selective failure attack. We have y, we have uh, e, this, uh, this e is public and y is known to Bob. So Bob can first select a random y and feed y into the oblivious transfer. And now the Garbo circuit and instead of computing fxy, it will first recover the real input in the circuit and then do the, do the following computation. So um, if the, if the root probe matrix uh, translates uh, n number, n input into n prime input, uh, so previous works, we say that, uh, okay, so we need uh, about n prime number of OTs and we are happy because computing the root probe matrix is free thanks to free XR. However, uh, if you actually calculate direct carefully, actually number of XR is quadratic to the input. So I mean, XR is free, it's uh, one instruction, but uh, it's still n, it's n square. And what's worse, the, rope, the size of the row probe matrix is also quadratic. So it means that uh, in order to compute row probe, in order to do this computation in the circuit, we need to compute n square number of uh, XR, and in each step, we also need to look up a n square number of size matrix to find out whether we should uh, XR or not. So for example, if we have, uh, again, 64 KB input, it's about uh, 4 billion XR operation and the matrix of 4 billion bit, uh, assuming that uh, you, are, you are packing all the bit very compactly. So this is our next task. We want to reduce the size of this row probe matrix, make it efficient and still uh, secure. So I mean, first, uh, it's uh, first idea is to we, let's just chunk off the unnecessary part. So I mean, so ordinarily it shouldn't be secure because I mean we lose a lot of randomness. However, so the notice that if we make sure that each of the small green part is still a row probe matrix, then the large one where we just put, as put aside everything together is still a row probe matrix. This is because, I mean, if we select any number of rows, it's either in the same row probe matrix, which is fine, or, we, or they are in the different row probe matrix, which is even better because they won't have any overlap. So now the problem really just reduced to one single problem, how to construct this small probe matrix with the particular, si partic particular size because we can reduce the same row probe matrix on this diagonal. So now we have this small row probe matrix. Uh, so inspired by Linda and River 15, we first add a identity matrix. Uh, we replace the first part of the random matrix to an identity matrix. Uh, so this is actually very nice in the, uh, in the analysis because uh, we now know that if we just x all like L number of rows, we are guaranteed that, that there are at least L ones in the, in the matrix because the identity matrix already contribute you L number of ones in the, res in the result. So now, uh, the, so when we want to cal calculate the probability that this is a row probe matrix, we don't need to consider the case where we select more than row number of rows row number of rows because, uh, I mean, that, that's guaranteed to be to have num row number of ones. So now we only need to consider the case where they are like a smaller set, where the size of S is smaller than row. And very nicely, uh, in, even in this case, uh, the, row, the identity, identity matrix contribute a lot of uh, ones already, so the bound is actually much tighter. Uh, so uh, actually, after we like, uh, find all the concrete numbers and stuff, so this is our final construction. So we kind of chunk all the uh, uh, chunk the input size into uh, into sizes of into multiplication multiple of 232 uh, bit, and for each of them we uh, we have a, like uh, we have a blue up of two uh, in this case. Uh, okay, so in compare compared to the prior best work, uh, we kind of have a 1,000 times speed up in terms of uh, in terms of the uh, running time with uh, like a 65k bit. So notice that actually here, so the cost of uh, our row probe matrix is actually much, is uh, slightly higher than the previous probe matrix, 
but that is fine because you can see actually the cost is dominated by the by by computing this uh, giant probe matrix actually row time number of times. Okay, so the last issue is to how to enforce input inconsistency. So actually, uh, in the input recovery kind of paradigm, there are two input consistency issues. So one is that how to ensure that the input is, uh, we are using the same input across different circuits in the cut and choose. And also we want to ensure that, uh, so when we do the input recovery, the input is the same as uh, what we embedded into the cut and choose. So from high level, this is uh, 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 the, the old version. So the problem is that this X can all be different and we want to ensure that uh, some consistency among them is, is, is true. So, uh, so the idea of uh, prior work is to kind of construct a zero knowledge proof that takes uh, this input as this t takes this X is input and prove to Bob that they are secure. Uh, no, sorry, they are consistent in some way. So it means that. Uh, so the intuition is that I want to show that uh, all these lines are consistent. So is it really is it really uh, like necessary? Actually, no. So. Uh, so in this paper, the high level, I, so the intuition is that, okay, so we are not going to enforce this strong consistency. Instead, we just want to in, uh, enforce that at least one of the good circuit is consistent with the one in the input recovery. And we want, we just use whatever that, is, that is, we extract from the input rega recovery as the uh, input that, uh, that, that, to define that as the input of Alice. And it turns out that uh, it is much, uh, much better, especially when we incorporate this consistency with the input recovery protocol I introduced uh, previously. Because again, this can be done very efficiently uh, in, the, in cut and choose altogether uh, with, the, with the input recovery. Okay, so I mean, now we have practical MPC, of course we need to implement the protocol. So we implement the protocol and uh, it's, uh, as it's a part of the EMP toolkit and everybody is uh, welcome to try it. So we, try, so we run the experiment on a reasonable machine of, uh, of this Amazon size, uh, but, I mean, but however, we just use single core, so it doesn't really matter that much. And we use ADS and I. So the network is about 2.3 gigabyte, and uh, I mean, all the, all the experiment in the following assumes uh, 40 statistical sequence parameter and 128 computation parameter. <coughs> Okay, so first, uh, uh, three uh, examples with various size. The first one is, uh, every, is the circuit that everybody uses is AES. It takes about 65 milliseconds. Um, yeah. And for modular exponentiation of 2,000, 2000 bit, it's a, it's a much, 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 much larger circuit about, with about 4 billion, sir, 4 billion AND gate. And uh, I mean, we take about five hours to run in this case. Most of the cost is, uh, is for the circuit, is for sending the circuit. And we also run another circuit that is very, very wide and uh, with reasonable depth. For this circuit, it's, uh, so, it's a, it's a, so this is a circuit that we can to sort uh, 1,000 integers each of 32 bit. So it's about a 10 million AND gate circuit and takes about uh, less than a minute. Um, so, um, so this is a kind of uh, some other experiment we do. So in this case, we kind of fix the some of we fix input and output size and end gate, and only change one of the input and see like how our implement how our protocol works along with uh, like uh, like in terms of each of the component, and and it is actually linear for the input and output and the circuit size. You can see actually, so it takes about uh, 20 microseconds per bit and about four microseconds per end gate. Uh, so it's a, like a side story that actually, so this, it, it is this uh, experiment that we realize that uh, the cost of ROPO matrix is not linear, it's quadratic. Because when we run this experiment, we find that the line, when, uh, in terms of the P2's input is actually, uh, it's not a line, it's a quadratic uh, uh, function. Okay, so compare with the prior work, uh, uh, because like, uh, like uh, most of the work just uh, do the AES, so we compare against the AES. So in this case, uh, we can see uh, a trend here that uh, it's, uh, it's getting better. We are hoping that we, can get, we are getting even better from this point. 
Um, so, uh, so like concurrent and subsequent to this work, we, are, we have uh, a tons of uh, more uh, improvement to the to malicious to PC. So we are actually working on one of the extension of the protocol that support random seed checking. Uh, this is also a, a t this is also done together with Samuel and Lucy. And we also um, we are also able to drop the uh, drop the DDH uh, assumption such that we only need uh, OT here. And uh, like uh, there are also paper, like uh, there are also like uh, concurrent and uh, like more recent results on Lego, which actually improves function in function dependent cost. Uh, so for example, this this papers uh, put most of the computation to the face where the two parties does not know what function they want to compute. And uh, uh, and uh, however, uh, for this kind of uh, actu uh, protocols, they all need a large number of memories because. Uh, like a, a large number of memories that is uh, kind of proportional to the circuit size, or even worse. Uh, however, for, for, for the circuit level cut and choose, we don't really need a large of memories. It's, uh, everything can be pipelined, and the, uh, the memory footprint size is, uh, propor is pro only proportional to the statistical security parameter. So for example, uh, for a billion size circuit, the, the size of the memory you need to make sure it is constant run is, is going to be like hundreds of gigabytes. Um, unless you want to use disk. Okay, so that's all for my talk, and uh, thanks. And uh, here is the code you can you can go and try. Um, yeah. Thanks. We have time for a quick question. When you were talking about the rope herald matri matrix um, to for the selective failure attacks or against the selective failure attacks, uh, there was this S. Uh, I, I guess there was a set, but I'm I'm uh, unsure what S is there. Uh, S is a so it's a, it's kind of a, so in analysis you want to show that uh, for any subset uh, it's going to be fine. Uh, ah, okay. So that's the set, and then you need to apply a union bound across all set. Yeah, and in this particular case, because we don't need to consider like uh, set with more than row number, more than row number of rows, so it's like the union bound is exponentially smaller. Okay, um, yeah. clear. Thank you. Where does the randomness come from? The uh, randomness it comes from uh, when we choose y prime, we choose y prime randomly, and with uh, like uh, and uh, have y equals to e times y prime. E is a public matrix. The matrix is fixed. Yes. Yes. Other questions? I was just curious. You had uh, this modular exponentiation circuit. Did you yeah. build your own, or? I so uh, so in the EM. Thanks for the chance to give me to advertise the the, the, the framework. So in the EMP toolkit, we also have a on the fly circuit compiler. Mm. Uh, so you can write. Uh, so it's like we have uh, like uh, integers and the floating point and all all other stuff. So I built I built a small program in that to compute modular exponentiation, mm -hmm. and, uh, and it works out it. directly. So you, you didn't try to optimize the modular exponentiation. No, you just compiled it. No. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, it's like textbook version of modular exponentiation. Right. 